Okay, so we will look into this paper, yeah. So the first one, okay, first question, you see that, okay, we are going to have this ion compound and they have Fe2 plus ions, Fe3 plus ion, or it can contain both ions, okay. So uh, let's go directly uh, to this. So all these informations are given, you can read, okay. So now the method, okay, first, okay, whenever you see this, Okay, when they ask you to weigh the compound, when they ask you to do anything, always represent this in table. Although it's not necessary to represent this on table, even in the marking key, they say you write down the list, it's acceptable. Okay, but I want you to draw the table. So here, okay, I'm going to actually use, so here you see, weigh the sample of FA1. So first of all, it's going to be mass of FA1. And then I will say, okay, and container, okay, and container. And this one I will write down in grams, okay. So this is going to be the first thing that I'm going to actually do. So let's say I'm going to draw the table, okay. So second is going to be, you write down, okay, the mass, okay, they say tip the FA1 into 250 cm cube beaker, reweigh the container including any residual of FA1. So now it's going to be the mass of container only, okay, the mass of container, again is gram, okay, so we want that. So we need to record both of these data. And then calculate the mass of FA1 transfer into the beaker. So now this one, after you minus these two data, you can actually get the mass of FA1. Okay, mass of FA1, again, gram. Okay, make sure you write properly. Okay, make sure the units are written. Okay, so now I'm going to actually put all this data uh, information. Okay, so I might need uh, your your data yeah so aurelia can you tell me what is your fa1 and the container hurry up hurry up or anyone's data 34.76 okay so how about the mass of container only uh can you recheck again 29.80 so what is the difference okay 34.7 again okay 4.96 okay 4.96 you just need to minus yeah so make sure one thing that is important over here is to main, uh, maintain the consistency of the decimal places okay so if you are using two decimal place you have to use the same thing yeah so you use your same uh, your reading okay so now okay uh, you can read all this okay but i'll just straight away go for the titration even for the titration okay uh, when you are carrying out your rough titration okay there are enough space for you to draw this okay table okay it's not compulsory but again you can if you have time okay initial burette reading Okay, and then you can put okay, cm cube, and then final burette reading, and then you put cm cube, and then rough tighter, and then cm cube. Okay, so if you want to put as a list, also can, but I suggest to put it in form of table. Okay, whenever it's possible, try to put it in table form. Okay, so try. Okay, so next time, okay, when you come for your practicals, I want you to bring your pencil. I want you guys to bring your ruler as well. Okay, so make sure we practice all this. Okay, now, so what is your rough title? Anyone's? Okay, 20.70. So let's say this is going to be 20.70 so i'll put down here 20.70 assuming that your initial title is going to be initial burette reading is 0.00, .00 and this one is 20.70 okay so done okay now carry out as many accurate titration that you think necessary but according to our practical paper okay we do not have a lot of time to do many titration 
you do not include your rough title as the accurate title. So it means that we are assuming that we are going to do another two more title. Okay, and do it drop by drop properly. Maximum it can go to three. Okay, don't go for the fourth. Okay, so here, what are the things important that you need to do? Uh, remember, okay, again, you need to have okay initial be read reading, okay, initial be read reading, and then you have CM cube, and then final be read reading CM cube as well, and then you have volume, okay, of. In this case, FA2, volume of FA2, CM cube. And then, don't forget, selected title. And then tick. Okay, so now we are going to draw the table. And we are assuming that we are going to do this for two times. Okay, so I will take it as for two columns. Okay, so I just put it here. Okay, so okay, let's say we are going to do it for two times. Okay, so one and two. Okay, so initial. Uh, what is your volume of FA two? Give me two volume. Aurelia. No, no, no need initial. Just volume. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Then I did the okay. Okay. From here, you can see the reason why Aurelia, uh, Aurelia decided to take the another title because okay, there is going to be you need to make sure that the difference between your title must be zero point one. Okay, so if you see between 1 and 2, she got 20.30, 19.90, there's a difference of 0 0.4. It's too far away, okay? So what we need to do is we need to actually make sure that you have the difference of 0 0.1. That's why she did the third uh, uh, title, but do remember here, she didn't use any of the value of the rough title to compensate Okay, whatever mistake that she has over here. It means the rough title, once you are done, is done. You cannot put it back in the calculation. So here, assuming okay, your initial B-Write reading, it's not 50.00. Yeah? So there are students who are writing 50.00. So it's supposed to be 0 0.00. Let's say you start 0 0.00. Let's say the third one, you started with 0 0.10. Okay, so here is 20.30, 19.90. Here should be 20.30, okay? And then you get the volume of the FA2. And we need to tick, okay? We are selecting this and we are selecting this, okay? The first and the third, okay? The difference of 0 0.1, okay? Now, once you have done that, okay, they say that from your accurate titration results, calculate a suitable mean value to be used in your calculation. And they say show clearly how you obtain this value. Although, okay, if you get 20.30 and the third titration, you get 20.30. Although the answer is 20.30, we need to make sure that we show that 20.30 plus 20.30 divided by 2 is 20.30. So you need to show the working. So I will write down for this working 20.30 and the selected title, another one is 20.20. So this one divided by 2, okay, so 2 accurate titrations, and you are going to get 20.25, and that is going to be the one that I'm going to write over here, 20.25 cm cube of FA2. Hi everyone, today's video will be on how to do titrations for paper 3. This video will cover the procedures of titration and how to tabulate the data, along with some tips and tricks along the way. The first step is to weigh the sample of FA1 and its container. Don't forget to put the weighing scale on tear and wait a few seconds for the balance to stop wavering before you record the mass. Then, tip the FA1 into the 250cm cube beaker, reweigh the container, including any residual FA1, and record its mass. You may draw a table like I did here and use it to calculate the mass of FA1 by subtracting the two masses that were recorded before. Preparing the solution. 
First, add approximately 200 cm cube of distilled water to the beaker and stir until the FA1 has dissolved. Be sure to stir until the solution is completely clear. Pour the contents carefully into the 250 cm cube volumetric flask and use a funnel to prevent any spillage. Then, rinse the contents of the beaker with a little distilled water and fill the flask to the line with it along with more distilled water and shake thoroughly. Then, label the solution FA4 and don't forget to close the volumetric flask with a lid to prevent it from oxidizing, which can cause an alteration to our results. The first step in titration is to fill the burette with FA2. When doing this, don't forget to close the burette and you can also place a beaker below it to prevent spillage. For accurate titrations, the bottom of the burette should be filled as well. Next, pipe a 25cm cube of FA4 into the conical flask. Then, use the 25cm cube measuring cylinder to add 15cm cube of FA3 into the conical flask. To get accurate results, the measuring cylinder should be viewed at eye level and the bottom of the meniscus should be at the 15cm cube mark. So now, we've got the FA2 filled in the burette and a solution of FA3 and FA4 in the conical flask. Now for the rough titer, add FA2 from the burette until the solution in the flask turns into a permanent pink. Do not do this drop by drop. Instead, let FA2 flow until color change is seen. This can be done with your dominant hand used to stir or shake the conical flask and your less dominant hand for controlling the burette. Similarly, do a first and second accurate titer. If my rough titer was 19.6 cm cube, I would let FA2 flow until 15 cm cube and then FA2 is added drop by drop until I see a color change. These were my results. If the first two accurate titers have a difference of more than 0.2 cm cube, it is required to do a third accurate titer. And then select your titration results that are 0.1 cm cube apart or have the smallest difference. And that is how you perform titrations. Thank you for watching. Now, so here, okay, I'm going to actually try to answer the question over here. So they say that give your answers in appropriate significant figures. Done. Next, start to calculate. And I need you guys to help me with calculation over here. Now, calculate the amount in mole manganate ions in the volume recorded in B. Now, manganate ions, okay, you see here FA2. What is FA2? FA2 is going to be 0 0.01 mole per uh, mole per dm cube potassium manganate 0 0.01 okay so 0 0.01 mole per dm cube okay and we have used 20.25 cm cube so depending on what value that you have you calculate accordingly so if you want to calculate the number of moles number of moles equals to we know that kmno4 will give you K plus and MnO4 minus. Every one mole is one mole over here. So the number of moles of KMnO4 is the same as MnO4 minus. Okay. So here, okay, number of moles is going to be 0 0.01 concentration times the volume 20.25 and it must be in dm cube, so divide by 1000. So you will get, okay, you will get 0 0.2025 times 10 negative 3 which is 2.025 times 10 negative 4 okay 2.025 times 10 negative 4 moles okay done now the next question is they want you to calculate the amount in mole of iron 2 ions okay so um, rudy i want you to write down in paper yeah Okay, you need to submit. Now, calculate the amount in mole okay, of iron 2 ions in weighted sample of FA1. Now, in weighted sample of FA1, I'm going to use the data that you give me. Just uh, you give me. Okay, in this case, okay, I have the FA1 as 4.96 gram. Okay, now, so I will just use that value. So, mass, okay, 4.96 gram. I will put it over here. But now... Okay, this 4.96 gram, you, can, uh, you don't have any other data. The only thing that you have now is the equation, okay, because it's reacting, right? So, this is the equation that we have. So, I'm going to actually select this equation. 
Okay, and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, we are going to solve this using this equation. Okay, so this according to this equation, they say that okay, every um, if you look over here, we have found out MnO4. This is going to be 2.025 times 10 negative 4. Okay, and we want to calculate the ion 2 ions. Okay, so it means that every 5 moles okay, will react with 1 mole. So we can see clearly over here, if I want the Fe2+, plus, I need to times the value that I have with 5. Okay, it's 5 times greater. So here what I need to do is, okay, I need to times 5 times, okay, 2.025 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Okay, help me to calculate. 1.0125 times negative 3. Okay, so this is going to be the number of moles of F A, uh, Fe2+. plus. Okay, so number of moles of Fe2 plus is going to be 1.0125 times 10 negative 3. So you rewrite again 1.0125 times 10 negative 3. Now we want to calculate the percentage by mass of iron in Fe1. Uh, it's okay, okay, it's okay. Uh, the more, if you have more, is good. More than three significant figures is good, but cannot be less than three significant figures. Uh, can you can? So in this case, if you want to round it off, it's one point zero one times ten negative three. Yeah. So normally the marking key will say three to four significant figures. Cannot be less than that. Okay. Now. Calculate the percentage by mass of iron in Fe1. Now, we know that, okay, we know that when you use 4.96 gram, okay, and we found out that Fe2 plus is this number of mole. Now, we know that, okay, uh, please remember, if you have copper, for example, okay, copper metal, generally copper metal will give you copper 2 plus plus 2 electron. Okay, why I'm writing copper instead of iron? Because one mole will always give you one mole. Okay, so if you have Fe, okay, Fe will give you Fe3 plus or Fe will give you Fe2 plus, okay, depending on what you want. Okay, in the end, the number of moles is still one to one. Okay, why I'm doing this? Because now I know the number of moles of Fe2 plus. Okay. But we want the mass of iron. Okay. So how do I refer to Fe? Okay. The number of moles of Fe2 plus is the same as number of moles of Fe. Okay. One to one. That's very important. Okay. So once you get that, we know the number of moles of Fe is going to be 1.0125 times 10 negative 3. And now, okay, what you can do, you can calculate the mass. Number of mole equals to mass divided by AR, okay? And the mass of iron, you can check in the periodic table, okay? Iron is 50, let's see. Iron is 55, 55.8. Uh, so we will use 55.8 over here. So, you need to times the okay, number of moles with AR. Okay, so if I want the mass of Fe, it's going to be number of moles times okay, the AR, which is, which is 55.8. Okay, I check again, yeah, 55.8. Fe is 55.8. Now, so help me to calculate this, okay, when you times. Okay, so let's take it as, uh, let's take it as it is, okay? So you have that, okay? So now we want to calculate the percentage by mass of iron. We took from 4.96 gram, okay? So percentage, okay, by mass is going to be what you have now, which is 0 0.005649 divided by, yeah? 
okay so zero zero point zero okay so zero point zero and divided by four point nine six times hundred percent so you help me to calculate this you will get the percentage Walters, do your work. Nine six times hundred. One point one three nine percent. Okay, you can simplify this into one point one four percent to uh, three significant figures. Okay, now. A student carries out the same experiment in A. The student receives a sample of FA1 with a container with a lid. The student records the initial mass of the container with its lid and a sample of FA1. Then the student records the mass of the container with the residue but forgot to replace the lid. Okay? So uh, the situation is like this. Okay? Earlier, okay, when you have this, so now I will write down over here. So the situation is, Let's say the person has mass of FA1 and the container has lid. Okay? And then the person added the mass of container but forgot the lid. Okay? Forgot the lid. So what happens? Okay? Let's say I give a value. For example, let's say earlier this was 10 gram. Okay? Everything together, 10 gram. And then, let's say the container only forgot the lid, let's say 5, okay? And then, the student took the answer as 10 minus 5, which is 5, correct? But, okay, if you included the lid, okay, supposed to be, yeah? If you included the lid, maybe it's supposed to be 10, the lid will have certain mass, okay, let's say 2 gram. So let's make it a 7. The student supposed to get over here 3 instead of 5. Okay. Now, let's say when the student calculate the percentage of uh, mass. Okay. The student got okay, uh, from our calculation. Okay. Let's say here we use the calculation. We have um, 0 0.05. Let's say we take it as 0 0.5 for example. Okay. So let's say both of them also, the student calculated 0 0.5, okay? For this also, the, uh, the student say 0 0.5 out of 5 times 100%, the student calculated. And what happens, okay, you get 0 0.1 times 100, you will get, okay, 0 0.1 times 100, 10%. The student get 10%. But supposed to be, the student supposed to be getting 0 0.5 divided by not 5, must be divided by 3, and then times 100%. What do you get? 0 0.5 divided by 3 times 100%. Just quickly calculate for me. Yeah, Joyce? Yeah? Okay, if you calculate, you get 16.7%. You see, yeah? you supposed to get 16.7% as your percentage, okay, by mass, but you, because you forgot the lead, it, uh, what happened, you are getting smaller value, okay? So how do we explain this, okay? When you explain, you explain the mass, okay, of FA1 becomes bigger, okay? The mass of FA1 becomes bigger, okay, the mass of FA1 becomes bigger, and, okay, and the percentage by mass of Fe will become smaller than the actual value so this is what we want ok 
Okay, so I'll just copy this and I will paste it over here. Okay, so this is uh, the answer. You can actually uh, write it down properly. Okay, how would this error alter the student's answer in C4? Okay, so percentage of uh, by mass of iron, okay, now, okay, will become smaller. Okay, why it becomes smaller? Because the mass of FA1 becomes bigger. Okay, because she forgot the lead. Okay, now, state two assumptions that has been made in calculating the percentage by mass of iron in FA1. Now, there are few assumptions that is being made over here. First of all, okay, we are using this equation, okay, Fe2+. Plus, but they say the sample contains Fe2+, plus, Fe3+, plus, and other ions and so on. So, our assumption is, okay, the sample contains Fe2+. Plus, okay, so the assumption is the sample only contains Fe2+. Plus. What are the other assumptions? Our other assumption is <coughs> Fe3+, plus. they say Fe3+, plus is there also, and other cations are not reacting with, with what? Because we are calculating this because they are reacting with KMnO4. Okay? So in this case, we are assuming the other cations of Fe3 plus are not reacting with KMnO4. Okay? If they react, then our values will be different. Okay? Because we are calculating the number of moles of uh, KMnO4 that is, re uh, that is reacting. So if it is reacting, then that's going to directly convert it. We are assuming it belongs to Fe2+. Plus. Okay? So we are assuming that, the sam uh, rather than saying that the sample only contains Fe2+, plus, the sample, con uh, the, sam the F, I will just rewrite this. The Fe2+, plus is the only ion that reacts with KMnO4. Okay? Fe3 plus and other cations are not reacting with KMnO4. Okay? That's our um, assumption. Okay? Or you can say there are other impurities. Okay? Other impurities are not present. Okay? Or other impurities that react with MnO4 is not present. Yeah, basically we are just telling that we are following 100% the equation. Okay, that's very important. Okay, let's go on okay, to question number two. So this one also I need some of your data. In this experiment, you will determine the percentage by mass of magnesium in hydrated salt. So you see here, okay. Do remember, okay, MGX, okay, 7H2O, what happened? They will change it to MGX plus 7H2O, okay? So when they actually heat up, okay, we are going to release the water. So you are going to measure the loss of mass, okay, of a sample of hydrated salt, heated to form, and hydrous salt. So this is the hand hydrous salt. Now, so FA5 is a pure, a pure sample of this. So there are no other things that are present. Okay. So what we need to do, okay, as uh, I mentioned to you earlier, as they have given you the method, you write down, okay, put it in a form of table. So they say that weigh the crucible with its lead. Uh, lead. So mass of crucible with lead. Okay. Then. FA5, reway. So it means mass, mass of crucible, lead, and FA5. Make sure you put gram, gram. And then support the crucible, heat the crucible, 
gently remove the lid, heat strongly, replace the lid, allow the crucible to cool at least five minutes. So this one to make sure all the water is going out. Okay. And then when the crucible is cool enough, reweigh the crucible with this lid and its content and record the mass. So we are assuming all the water has been uh, evaporated. Yeah. So here when you, uh, when you uh, measure, okay, we are measuring the mass of crucible lead and anhydrous FA fund okay without the water okay so we will need some data over here okay I think some of you didn't uh, what is actually the mass of crucible with lead anyone Okay, one, one group only, yeah? So? 34.98. Okay, we'll take this one. 35.98. So, crucible lead and FA5? 5.3. So, here we can actually calculate. You see, calculate and record the mass of FA5. So, I can actually write down mass of FA5. Okay, which is in gram. So I just need to minus. Okay, what what do you get? 1.55. And then they also. Uh, what is your mass of crucible lead and anhydrous? 36.73. So we can calculate the mass of water. So how do we get that? We just minus these two. Yeah. So zero point. Seven five. Okay, so please actually use your own data. Okay, if you don't have the data, use these values. So I will erase this part. Make it nicer. Okay, done. Now, so we will uh, continue. Now, calculate the amount in mole of water being lost. Okay, the amount of mole uh, water here is going to be the mass, 0 0.75 divided by relative uh, molecular mass, which is 18. So, help me to calculate. In yeah. 0 0.04166. 0 0 okay, so please always use decimal, don't use fractions. Yeah. So here is going to be you will get this number of moles. Okay. The more you have is okay. If you want to maintain this one, it's still okay. Or if you want to change it into three significant figures, that will be 0 0.0417. Yeah. So Calculate the percentage by mass of magnesium in FA5. This is important again. You see, yeah, you have MgX7H2O, very important. The, when they react, okay, they are going to give you MgX plus 7H2O. From here, okay, we know that the number of moles of 7H2O is going to be 0 0.04166. Okay, we got it over here. Now, from here also, I can find out what is MgX, okay? MgX is going to be, number of moles of MgX is going to be uh, 0 0.04166 divided by 7. Because why? 117. I want for one more. Okay, so divide by 7, what do you get? 5.9514. Okay. So you get this, okay? The percentage by uh, number of moles of MgX. But we want the percentage by mass of magnesium. Now, please remember, MgX contains Mg and X. Okay? You can write it down, Mg2+, okay? X2- minus doesn't matter, okay? Even though you write down Mg2+, X2-, minus, I already told you, every one Mg will have one mole of Mg2+. Plus. Similar like just now, copper will have one mole of copper 2+. Plus. So similar, one mole of this will have one mole of that. It means why? I'm actually referring to 
if you find out the number of moles of MgX is similar, MgX is the same as number of moles of Mg2+, which is the same as number of moles of Mg. I'm trying to relate. Okay. So, if you have this, I can find, okay, it means now I know the number of moles of Mg is 5.9514 times 10 negative 3. I can find out what is my mass of Mg because mass of Mg is going to be number of moles equals to mass over AR. Mass is number of moles times AR. Okay, so number of moles is going to be 5.9514 times 10 negative 3. The relative atomic mass is 24.3. You can refer to your periodic table. Okay, once you calculate, tell me what is going to be the mass. Okay, the mass of magnesium. 0.1446 gram. Okay, so we found out okay, the mass of magnesium in what? Okay, come back over here in 1.55 uh, 1 okay, 1.55 gram. Yeah, so we have 1.55 gram of what? Okay, this MgX7H2O. Yeah, because they want in FA5. Yeah, this is FA5. So percentage of mass, okay, percentage of mass equals to 0 0.1446 divided by 1.55 times 100 percent. How many percent? 9.33? Zero. Zero. Okay, so percent okay so i will get 9.33 percent now suggest two assumptions that must be made in this experiment to give uh, an accurate value of percentage of mg now what are our assumptions basically we are doing uh, we are heating it up okay and we are going to assume that whatever value that we have over here the number of moles uh, the mass of water is accurate it means that we assume that all okay all water has been lost okay from heating okay all the heating okay has been done until it reached constant mass so don't tell me after you heat again then the mass will decrease if you heat again and the mass decrease it means that you didn't heat properly Okay, so all the water has been lost from heating. Okay, another thing is, okay, we assume also when you heat up, okay, you see MgX7H2O, when you heat up, we are going to get MgX plus 7H2O. But there is a possibility that if you continue to heat, the MgX can decompose also. We don't want that to happen because if it decomposes, the mass will go down. But that decrease of mass is not going to actually show us the decrease in uh, or the mass for water. Okay, it will actually give us a wrong value. So it means that our assumption is the MgX, okay, the MgX or the anhydrous salt, okay, the anhydrous salt do, uh, does not okay, decompose on heating okay or we can uh, they want two assumptions and I told you whenever they ask for two just give two okay one more thing if you want to write is going to be all the mass that is being lost is directly related to the water but that will uh, is already covered by number one point number one okay so these are the two assumptions that must be made over there don't actually uh, write down like there is uh, no spillage, okay? uh, maybe there's something spilled. No, don't write all these kind of things. Maybe the person didn't measure properly. Uh, so uh, the assumption everything is measured properly. Don't do all these kind of things. Okay? In A-levels, we need to be more accurate. 
So these are the assumptions. Okay. Or you can say another thing, but it was not mentioned uh, given in this uh, marking key. Okay. Because sometimes when you heat up something, there will be some minor explosions. Yeah. Some minor explosions that will cause the substance to go outside of the crucible. But they didn't put it in the marking key because they already mentioned heat gently. Okay, so they do not include that as your answer because they already say heat gently. Okay, so if you want, you can write that, but no marks will be awarded for that because they already said heat gently. Okay, but if they didn't say heat gently and they ask you for assumption, that will be definitely one of the assumption. Okay, because when you heat up, okay, maybe some of it can actually explode and go outside of the crucible. That will give us the false reading, thinking that thinking that might be water. Yeah, but it's not water. Yep. Now, next, okay, is the qualitative analysis. Okay. For qualitative analysis, okay, this one, okay, you guys have already done okay, the practical. So I will just review a little bit over here. So they say that Fa6 is an acidified aqueous solution of a salt that contains two cations and one anion. Okay? <clears throat> All of them are listed in qualitative analysis notes. Now, select region or regions to use in tests uh, to identify these two cations. So what you need to do, okay? So the regions that you choose, okay? And then you need to uh, record your observation. You write down observation okay and you can write down the regions okay regions so generally when we are testing for cation okay two cations they say test for cations only so we are testing for cation you can refer to your qualitative analysis notes okay under these notes you can see that there are two things that you uh, you do you react with sodium hydroxide or you uh, and you react with ammonia okay so let's say i'm going to actually write down i react with uh, sodium hydroxide okay so the test is going to be i add okay add sodium hydroxide aqueous okay and then okay what is my observation okay with fa uh, i put fa6 okay what is my observation observation with fa6 Okay, the observation is supposed to be, we supposed to get a red brown precipitate. Okay, I know that we don't get the actual red brown, it's like something like a pale uh, brown or pale yellow. Okay, but if you look at the qualitative analysis, we need to relate to that. Okay, so it's going to be red brown precipitate. Okay, red brown precipitate. Okay, and we can see also there is going to be with a colorless solution at the top. So it is important to say there is a colorless solution at the top, okay? And then, okay, we need to uh, do further testing, okay? How do I know whether I need to do further testing? You see, yeah, when I, even before that, okay, when I add with uh, ammonium, I'll just put it here, when I add ammonium, okay, what I will see, I will see the same thing. So I will just copy the, uh, you guys already done the experiment. Okay, you will see the same thing okay, over here. I will just put it here. But how do I know that should be a further testing? Okay, you check here okay, when there is going to be a red uh, uh, precipitate or some kind of a brown precipitate. You can see that there is no other uh, cations okay, that is going to be red brown precipitate other than okay, Fe3+. Plus, okay? Other than Fe3+, there's no other things, okay? So we have identified one of the cation, which is Fe3+, but we need to confirm it, okay? How do we confirm? You see, precipitate insoluble in excess, precipitate insoluble in excess. So what you need to do? You need to add excess, okay? So we need to add excess. So what we do? Put dotted line because it's actually immediately after that. Okay, after you add sodium hydroxide, okay, add excess, okay, and then what I will see, the precipitate, red-brown precipitate, 
okay remains or insoluble in excess okay and then the same thing dotted line at excess of ammonia okay what i see red brown precipitate insoluble in excess now there is one more thing that we need to notice over here i have found out fe3 plus we have found out is fe3 plus but they say two cations the other cations must be something that is colorless the colorless solution because there's no other precipitate color uh, precipitate is seen so we need to check which one okay when you add these two solution gives you like no precipitate or solution yeah so you see everything that is precipitate 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 i don't see all this kind of precipitate one thing that i notice is there is no precipitate and then you can see there is no reaction it means there is colorless solution so it means that there is a possibility of having ammonium but how do i confirm ammonium i confirm ammonium by you can see ammonia produced on warming so this is very important how do i know i need to warm okay so i need to actually warm sodium hydroxide so here okay i will know that okay what i need to do extra okay you just put over here dotted line okay sodium hydroxide warm okay gently when you warm gently what happens okay you are going to get ammonia okay so you can say uh, when you warm a gas or you can say uh, effervescence okay effervescence Okay, effervescence. Okay, observe. So once you have effervescence uh, observed, okay, when tested with damp red litmus paper, gives blue. Okay, basically ammonia is given out. Okay, so ammonia is being given out. Okay, so here I know that I can confirm this is going to be NH4 plus. Okay, next. Okay, these are the table. Yeah, so I know that you guys are not drawing this table. Please practice. From where I get this table, you see here. This table is similar to the table in the question paper also. So practice. Okay, practice. How they do this table, test, observation, whatever test that you do. Yeah? And if there is a carry a forward test, let's say you don't need to wash and so on, you put, put dotted line. Okay? Separate test, put complete line. Okay? Or you just tell test two, it's okay. Now, so once you're done, okay, they say that the anion in FA6 is either sulfate or sulfide. Select a region or regions to use okay, in test to identify this ion. So for sulfate and sulfide, you can check from the table here. Okay, sulfate and sulfide, these are the table. And you can see what you need to test. Okay, so if I bring it over here, okay, you just need to test according to what you have over there. Okay, so let's say for example, they say... Okay, if it is sulfate, okay, so again, I will just put, okay, test, and then observation, okay, test and observation, so let's say what test that I want to test, okay, observation with FA6, so the first test, okay, they say BA2+, plus, BA2+, plus. so maybe I test at barium chloride aqueous, okay, this was there, provided for you barium chloride when i add barium chloride i observe white ppt so you see both of them give you white ppt okay but what i need to do i need to uh add okay uh this dilute strong acid so what i do okay dotted line 
add dilute ACL. Okay, you must actually give the actual acid here. Yeah? Add dilute ACL and what I see. Okay, whether it is soluble or insoluble. Okay, so you will notice if you if you do properly, you will see that the white precipitate is insoluble. Okay, but if let's say you did, uh, you are not uh, so sure. Okay, you are not so sure. What you can do, you can do another test. Okay, additional test. What is the another test? You can see they uh, decolorize K aqueous K MnO4. Okay, if let's say you cannot get high amount of calcium ions over there. Okay, let's say it's not provided for you, but K MnO4 is there. So what you can do? Okay, you can add. Okay, KMnO4 to Fa6 and see whether there is any observation or not. Okay, and you will see uh, no change. Okay, no reaction. Okay, no reaction or okay, the purple color remain. So if the purple color remain, I can actually say for sure now this is going to be SO4 to minus. Okay? So these are the things that you should have done. Okay? So the identify the ions present in Fa6 and give their formula. So they want formula. yeah. So Fa6, first we have identified Fe3+. Plus. Don't write wrongly. Yeah? When you add the initial, you get soluble and excess. Then you're not sure. Not sure. You want to do KMNO4. Yes, then you need to make some changes to your observation. Don't contradict. Yeah. Erase. Okay. If possible. Okay. Don't alter your results. Okay. If possible, you do the uh, test again. See whether they are really soluble or insoluble because you already KMnO4 is much more a better indication over here. So you check again, okay, whether it's soluble or not. Or do not contradict with your answer, okay. If your answer you know, okay, this is sulfate, okay, and then you know it's supposed to be why precipitate is insoluble. Don't keep your answer as soluble, okay. So you have to write down why precipitate is insoluble. So if possible, do it again, okay. If really cannot, you have another uh, result. Okay, with that result, we can confirm that the previous result is insoluble. You change, erase and change. Okay, so that's why the table is going to be helpful for you. But don't leave it as it is. Okay, because it's contradicting. Okay, so what we need to do is going to be you have ammonium. Okay, we know it's ammonium. The anion is SO42 minus. Okay, so I will actually uh, hold on first. Yeah, so now is your. Last time, right? Okay, so I will take some time. Okay, let's finish this off. Okay, so here, okay, we have this test. You add one cm depth of aqueous sodium sulfide. Okay, this one, what observation that you get? Yellow. So if you get yellow, you write down yellow. Anyone get red solution? <coughs> no, so we will keep it as yellow solution. Okay. Make sure it's yellow solution, yeah, not yellow precipitate. Okay, it's solution, it's see-through. Okay, now when you add one cm depth of sul dilute sulfuric acid, what you will see? Okay, the yellow solution will change into colorless. Yeah, the yellow solution turns colorless. Okay, all this was recorded. You can review the video. Okay, and then uh, add one cm depth of aqueous potassium iodide. Okay, so. This one, the yellow, uh, the solution, okay, turns darker yellow. Anything that is darker, yeah, so darker yellow, darker brown, yeah, you write down. And then add few drops of stuff solution. I saw many of you got the result, okay, so it turns, okay, turns blue black. So it's an indication of iodine, yeah. Okay, now, the next part. Okay, so here you have, okay, we are going to add few drops of aqueous silver nitrate and then add aqueous ammonia. So what we are going to get for Fa7, there should be cream precipitate. Okay, 
and here you will get a brown precipitate and here you will get a white precipitate now when you add aqueous ammonium okay the white precipitate dissolve yeah so ppt dissolve okay dissolves in uh, to form colorless solution and then here okay the cream precipitate remains okay remains or uh, insoluble and then here this one again if you see it will be soluble okay and form colorless solution now what else here if your results are insufficient why because now this is enough already these two are enough to uh, say that white precipitate is chlor uh, cl yeah must have cl okay silver chloride okay and then they dissolve so this one i know this one something to do with cl and this one cream precipitate is going to be something to do with br okay br minus so now they say that this one contains co3 okay so co3 the thing that i need to do related to co3 is okay carbon dioxide liberated by dilute acid so i need to add dilute acid so the dilute acid you must name what acid that you want to actually use okay the acid is going to be so again test observation so the test that i'm going to use i'm going to add dilute acl okay aqueous and then the observation we have to have fa7 fa8 and fa9 only this one no change no reaction no reaction only fa8 is the one that i suspect that has carb uh, carbonate okay they will have f uh, fizzing or effervescence okay fizzing and when the gas is tested with lime water okay it turns cloudy okay or it gives you white precipitate yeah yeah you won't be able to identify its carbonate okay you must confirm its carbonate okay because brown color is not available in your qualitative analysis uh, table so you still need to confirm its carbonate okay so you still need to add uh, do this test must do yeah must do this test if you don't do it for all also at least for fa8 must do okay you need to confirm okay so identify which solution contains which ion carbon uh, carbonate ion therefore contain in fa8 cl minus contain in fa9 and br minus is in fa7 okay done okay thank you guys